Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our first example of how to do a truss problem. This is a very simple truss. As you can tell, there's no vertical members. We just have the two slanted members and the one at the bottom. But it is actually a really good example to see how to solve one of these. First of all, we want to get the other dimensions. We only know that this one is 10 meters long. We have a force of 1,000 newtons pushing down at the very top. We need to know the length of the other members. Based on the angles that we're given here, if we draw a vertical line this way, you can see that this from there to there is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866. That makes this section right here 8.66 meters. And that makes this section right here, let's see, that would be 10 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is one half, which is five meters. So this height right here would be five meters. And since we have a 45 degree angle there, that means that this section right here is also five meters, like this. And we can go ahead like that. And that makes this angle, I mean, this member right there, that would be 25, that would be the square root of 50, which is 7.07 .07 or maybe 7.1 meters. Oh, let's try the 7.07 .07 meters for the length of this member. The next thing we want to do is determine which of the members are under compression and which members are under tension. One way to do that, and I'm looking for my red pen, I got it right here. One way to do that is to imagine this. With a thousand newton force acting on this, if this member was not joined right here to the other member, what would this member do? And you can see, you can imagine this to be rotating down this way and this member to be sliding out this way. So the connection here is preventing this member from sliding out. So this connection right here is pushing back, preventing it from sliding, which means that this member must be under compression. So we'll put a C here for compression, which means that against this joint, this member will be pushing in this direction. Against this joint, this member will be pushing in this direction. When a member is under compression, it pushes in both directions out against the joints where it's connected. Now imagine if, if we didn't connect it over here and the thousand newton force was pushing this way, this member would be rotating this way and this member would be sliding out this way. This connection is preventing it from doing that. That causes this member to be under compression, which means we have a force acting this way on that joint and a force acting this way on that joint. This member is also under compression. Now, the member at the bottom, notice that both of these members are under compression. When you push here, it would, if these weren't connected, it would push the ends of the members in this direction, but the connection here are preventing that from happening. This member is preventing that from happening. So this member is under tension. It'll be pulling on those two connections. This direction, this direction, does this bottom member is under tension. So that's one way to determine which members are under compression and which members are under tension. Now what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the force of the, on the support right here, F sub C. We're trying to find the force here, F sub A. And we're trying to find the tension and compression on the members, the members AB, the members BC, and the members AC. Notice I have the corners here marked A, B, and C. So member AB would be this member right there. The first thing you also want to do is realize that a, a truss is a solid structure. It acts as a singular solid structure, which means we can use the conservation of, well, not the conservation, but the sum of the torques adding up to zero to find F sub C and F sub A. If we imagine the point of rotation over here at A, you can then see that there's a force at B pushing this way and there's a force F sub C pushing in the direction here. We can then say that the sum of the torques about point A must add up to zero, which means we have an F sub C pushing in this direction, that's a counterclockwise direction, that's a positive torque. We have F sub C multiplied times the distance from the line of action of the force to the point of rotation. This is a total of 13.66 meters, 13.66 meters. And then minus, because the 1,000 Newton force causes a clockwise rotation, that's a negative torque, 1,000 Newtons multiplied times the distance from the line of action to the point of rotation, which is 8.66 meters. Now all we have to do is solve this for F sub C. F sub C then is equal to 1,000, when we bring this over to the other side, Newtons, times 8.66 divided by 13.66. 
and that will give us the force at C. 1000 times 8.66 divided by 13.66 equals, we have 634 newtons. Now to find the force at A, we can see that there is a total of three forces acting in the vertical direction. We can say that the sum of the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. We have two forces in the positive direction. This is equal to F sub A plus F at C minus the 1,000 newtons acting downward. Remember that we assume that the members do not have any mass and therefore there's no weight contribution in the vertical direction from the members. We know that F sub C is equal to 634 newtons, which means that F sub A is equal to 1,000 newtons. When we move that across, minus F sub C, which is 634 newtons, which means that F at A is equal to, that would be 366 newtons. If we add this to this, we get 1,000 newtons, so that's good. So we have the two forces acting on the two supports. And we accomplish that by assuming the truss was a solid structure. The next thing we want to do is try to find the forces in each of the members, either it be compression or tension. What we can do here is we can take a look at this corner right there. And we're going to draw all the three forces acting on that particular joint. We have F sub C in this direction. And F sub C is equal to 634 newtons. So F sub C equals 634 newtons. Then we have the force of compression right here pushing against the joint in this direction. So we draw a force in this direction and that would be the force on member BC. And finally we have the force of tension on member AC which pulls on the joint in this direction. So we draw this force this way. This is the force AC. Now this would be the tension, this would be compression, but it really doesn't matter when you try to calculate the magnitudes of those. Realizing that this angle here is a 45 degree angle, we can then now use the law of sines or sines and cosines to figure out what the values are. I like to use the laws of sines, which tells me that 634 Newtons divided by the sine of the angle directly across from that, which is 45 degrees, divided by the sine of 45 degrees, is equal to BC. And BC, that would be the compression on BC, divided by the sine of the angle directly across, that would be the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to AC, divided by the sine of the angle directly across that, which would be the sine of 45 degrees. Right away we can see that if that's the case, AC must be 634 newtons and BC can be found by taking 634 newtons divided by the sine of 45 degrees multiplied times the sine of 90 degrees. Of course, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. 634 divided by the sine of 45 degrees gives me 896.6, uh, let's call it 897 newtons, running off to the nearest newton, 897 newtons. Now we have the force on AC and we have the force on BC. We still need to find the force on AB. So we're still looking for one more here, the force on AB. How do we accomplish that? Well, one way to do that is to take a look at this joint right here. And we're going to draw all the forces acting on that joint. We'll do that over here. We have the 1,000 Newton force acting in a downward direction. We have a force of compression right here between from joint B to joint C. And BC is equal to 897 Newtons and it's acting in this direction. Uh, let's draw it like this. Mm, I think we're going to have to draw it like this. So here is the force BC, and we know what that's equal to. That force BC is equal to 897 newtons. And then we have the force of compression here between A and, A and B. We can draw that in this direction right there. 
So this is the force AB, and that's the one we're looking for. That's the only one we haven't found yet. Now the angles. Notice that relative to the horizontal, this is a 30 degree angle, which means that this must be a 60 degree angle. This here, because this is BC, that makes a 45 degree angle. 60 plus 45 is 105, subtracted from 180, that gives this a 75 degree angle. So that determines all the angles. Again, we can use a law of sine to figure out what AB is equal to. We can say here that 1,000 newtons divided by the sine of the angle directly across, which is a sine of 75 degrees, equals BC, which is 897 newtons, divided by the sine of the angle directly across, the sine of 60 degrees, equals the unknown member, AB, divided by the sine of the angle directly across, sine of 45 degrees. Finally, we can then say that A times B, or not A times B, that the member AB is equal to 1,000 newtons divided by the sine of 75 degrees multiplied times the sine of 45 degrees. So simply equating this to this here, and that gives us the following result. 1,000 divided by the sine of 75 times the sine of 45 732 newtons for that member. So we have the member AB, we have the member BC, and we have the member AC, as well as we have F sub C right here, and we have F sub A right there. That is a nice example, the simplest truss I suppose we can draw, and remember what we need to do then is in each case, you look at each of the connections or joints, you draw a diagram. If there's only three forces, it's, it's nice and easy. You can simply draw a triangle of some sort. You then equate the forces that you know to the forces you don't know, typically using the law of science. Now that's one way to do it. Later on we'll show you a method that shows you how you can find the magnitudes of those members or at least the tension and compression on the, of those members by using a slightly different technique. It's similar to that and Sometimes it's more convenient to use that method. But in this case, I just want to show you the general method of approach, which is using the law of sines or use the sign that goes under the tangent, depending upon what's easier, when you draw yourself a triangle, summing up the forces at each of the joints or each of the corners. And that's how it's done.